right, guys, we are back. We're at Craig Shop, and today in this video, we are gonna get this thing to fire up. Yep. The engine's all apart, all the new pieces are here. We're gonna get this thing um, hopefully running on its own power for the first time in a long time. But a lot of people had a question about why we, we haven't painted the bike yet. It's gonna get taken apart and then painted and stuff like this. It's kind of a mock-up. It doesn't take very long to put it all together. Um, we're just making sure all the pieces are right and that it does work properly, that we do have all the pieces. Because the last thing we wanna do is send it to the guy who's gonna paint it. And I mean, we do have a plan, but that plan is changing and we might be more involved with this thing, with the final bit of this thing getting put together uh, more than we thought. So Craig's gonna work on the engine and I'm gonna work on, I found something, I found something I gotta work on. Let's do it. All right. So the first step is to put the bearings on the crankshaft and then we have some seals to put in, uh, the motor plates, this is the support plate. We have to knock that seal in. Uh, then we're gonna get the crankshaft into the block. Once the crankshaft's in the block, support plate's bolted on, then it's piston connecting rod time. Now while Craig's working on that, we come back to this tire and we spaced it in a way that the chain was not touching the frame anymore, even though it's very, very, very close. But now we got a little bit of slack in the tire and Craig said he found some more bushings. You said you found more bushings? Yeah, they, I, they're here. They were, they were originally on it. I just forgot them the day we put it together. Every time you take something apart, you're like, oh, this will make sense when I put it back together, but it rarely ever does make sense. It also might be that these just need to be tighter. So it kind of squeezes the um, frame a little tighter on the bushings. So I'm getting this thing all nice and snug on these, on these jack stands so that I can take the rear tire back off and properly put the spacers on there. So the bottom bearings on this crankshaft need to be pressed on, the top ones can be knocked on. I'm actually following the instructions on this one. I was saying that can just get tapped on. So if you guys aren't familiar with seals, this is a single lip seal because it has one sealing lip in here. So the way these seals work is you always want to have this side. This is actually your sealing surface. So whatever side your oil's on is the side you want the open on. So if you put it on like this, it's going to leak. If you put it on like that, you'll be fine. So open side of seals like this always go towards what you're trying to keep in. Like, oh yeah, you know, if you're not paying attention, you'll just throw it in like this. And then it's backwards because this actually bolts onto the, the engine block like that. Okay, so the other seal I believe has a uh, depth requirement. So we'll have to pay attention once we get there. Hear how that sounds solid? If you guys don't know, Dan just had a baby. Let's all give him a congratulations for having a baby. Wife's doing good, baby's doing good. All right, so I got this thing, I got this thing pretty dialed in. If you, if, you, if you come and look and see over here, the chain is not touching the frame anymore. Right here, it was like, it was on it last time before. Now it's off the frame. It's brass, this is a brass drift punch. So it's softer than most other metals except aluminum. So you wanna be careful and use one of these most times. When you're using a press, um, A, you gotta be really careful because this is, this is like 20 tons of power here. Um, but you always want to make sure everything's square, level, lined up. If you start pressing and things aren't quite lined up, you know, guess what's going to happen? You're going to eat it. Don't want to eat it. So while Kirk's working on the boring engine, I'm over here trying to be a useful locomotive. And I'm gonna take off these, uh, take off these handlebars and get this all, all the stuff all cleaned up. I'm not sure if that's our responsibility, but you know what? Let's just, let's just get it done. Shine up the rust and polish off this. Uh, see what we can do with these. Craig says a pliers. I say a pair of pliers. What do you guys say? How do you guys say it? Comment below. Craig's dying to know. It's always so much better when Sean helps because it never makes extra work. Now 
bad. How's it going over there, Sean? It's going pretty good. It seems like everything's easier when there's a camera on you, you know what I mean? It's funny how that works. So an important step for whenever you're putting a top end on a, on a motor, a new top end, is you have to make sure the ring end gap is, is correct. And what that is, is the piston, or as the ring goes into the cylinder, those ends come together. And if that gap is too tight, once the motor heats up and goes through heat cycles, these rings actually expand. And if there's not enough room there for expansion, you're gonna crack a ring. Ben, I may have flown too close to the sun this time. I was cleaning off the nuts with the polisher and one just Currently I've not lost a single nut bolt on this whole project. Look how, look how nice they look, both sides. Don't sneeze. One of the big things with these engines is when you're, uh, when you're doing a new top end, you wanna replace the little connecting rod cap bolts. These are one-time use bolts. These are, I think, torque to yields. Yeah, you always want to make sure you replace these. This is a, a key bushing and it's actually canned. So one side is thicker than the other side. So that fits down over the crank. Now, this stator plate gets bolted here, and this is how you adjust the timing. You can move this, and what that does is as the engine rotates, this points follower follows the cam. And as it follows the cam, it will either make contact or break contact with the, on the points. And then that sends the charge up here to the coil to dissipate uh, the electricity to the spark plug. All right, so while Craig's working on the engine, we got this. And this is a little mud flap, not a mud flap, it's a little like mud water guard to kind of buttons on right here. And it's really, really stiff. And I think we can bring it back. I'm not completely sure. But when you're splashing, this is stopping all the stuff from the tire, splashing onto the engine and caking on there. Also, if you're, if you're forging through water, it's gonna stop the, the, the the impact of the big bulk of the water from splashing into the carburetor. So this is very important. So first, I'm gonna try to clean it. I got some leather cleaner. I'll try to get all the get all the gunk off. Now just getting the dirt off is actually making it a lot more malleable than what it was when we first brought it in. And then second, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to soften it. We're gonna let it soak in that oil over there. And then we're gonna condition it. And then hopefully it'll, it'll fit on there and then we can fix the rivets. I thought it'd be a good podcast name for someone who was an ex-convict. He had life behind bars. He got a lifetime conviction, got out on parole 40 years later. Now he rides motorcycles. Podcast, Life Behind Bars. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. That's not bad, and someone should do that. It's actually black. I honestly thought it was brown, but it's actually black. So now we got it cleaned up. I thought it was brown, it's actually black. It's a completely different color than what I thought. I'm not even sure if this is leather. Craig, does this feel like leather to you? No, definitely not. So is this even gonna help? Not gonna hurt. As far as we know, it's not gonna hurt. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's soak it in this for half an hour and see what happens. Maybe it'll make it a little more uh, pliable. Do you have a specifically uh, triangular box I can put this in? That's perfect, bring it over.
that silk in there for a little while. So that's one of the reasons why we're putting this thing all back together here before we get the frame done because we gotta make sure everything works. It's, it's possible that we something doesn't work, we gotta take it, take, take it apart and fix it. This is the first time of us rebuilding a Rokon. Rokon number one. It's looking good though. Yeah. Well now, nah, you were cleaning that yesterday before it was on the motor. Well, all right, let's pull it out, see if it did anything. I don't think it's gonna do much because it is, I think it's plastic. Even though it identifies as leather, leather well if we got a piece of leather we could stretch it out put the holes in there put the put the uh put the rivets in there and then take it to the guy and say this is the form this is how it fits can you cut it and make the edges look nice mm -hmm. that's what i'm thinking okay while craig's out going to get the um leather piece if you ever wondered those are all the helmets of craig's fallen enemies every time craig uh does a death race up at um, Devil's Point. He always goes down there at the end and collects their helmet. Never the head. This is that you test see if a reed is still good? You go like this. And all this wrenching reminds me of one of my favorite Bible verses, Galatians. 522 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. Looks like we're about ready to fire this thing up. Uh, when I initially asked Craig how long this might take to put the engine back together, I think Craig said a few hours. A few hours. Are we still at a few hours? It's been 17 days. A little bit easier. How much more better is that? I don't like how these feel like they're getting tight. You know what's interesting? I uh, Some people were commenting about the Rokon and why it has two different start mechanisms. Oh, the, yeah? the kickstart and the pull start. You know why? This just has a pull start on it because it was a motor from a different application that they put that they, fi they fixed on there. But two, if you're really swamped and you're in, bed, in mud that deep, you might not be able to use the kickstart. Oh. It should have like a little like a, a little voice in there that says like over torqued. Stop! And that is how I put this entire engine together by myself. Alright, now we're gonna put the engine back in. Now that it's not upside down anymore. Uh, maybe you should have done that from your side there, bud. Needs to go and now rotate up. How's that looking? So are they both on the, so it's like, it's like that and the one, they're not on the outside and the inside? No, well, we're gonna find out. It looks like it's correct. If it looks like it's correct, let's just oh, get it. Wait, wait, let me see the inside of this one. Can you hand real quick? Yep, yep. I probably have a picture too. get the tank back oh, I, is the tank coming back this exact moment i've had that exact same thought and we don't have a gas tank for this ah what is it, can't get the put it in backwards again ouch i got you craig here you go i'm hitting my head on that thing my face keep hitting my face supposed to do something yeah not doing anything did you forget to put the thing in there that does something I don't know I don't know did I pull harder I didn't take this apart it's also cool that this could be the way they they put this is this gonna be in any different configuration so what it's just putting it's just grabbing on here it just grabs onto there with these little teeth Wow is that like little yeah, yeah. because look Pulling this way, it's not getting any teeth in that direction. This is where you bleed. <laughs> so 
see anything it should bite on there. Kids, guys in the camera. Guys watching, watch your eyes. All right. Safety squints. What was the thing you said about me being smart? Take it back, I was just kidding. Oh, I know what it is. I figured it out. Oh. I figured it out, did you figure it out? Yeah. I figured it out. On the count of three, let's say what we both figured out. One, two, three. The There's, spring's on the yeah. wrong side. The spring's on the wrong side. They only have one grabbing side, right? So you would have thought that this would have been simple and easy, but me and Craig rebuilt this pool starter about seven times until we finally figured out how it actually works. This whole part took at least two hours. And every single time, we thought we had it figured out, but in reality, didn't, but eventually we got it. It was a very uh, weird moment. Put that on there. This is where I bleed. We did it. We finally did it. I was on my phone during the moment. I missed it, but Craig did it. Wow. That's what it's supposed to feel like. Craig, it's the little wins. We're getting there. We got this thing. Pool start working. But then, go. after trying to start it, we realized that it wasn't getting any spark. There we go. So we have to pull the flywheel off again. Yeah. I see it moving. Okay. I don't know, it just feels weird. It moves. <laughs> it broke. I'm not sure anything broke. I think it just popped loose. Yeah, it just popped loose. All right, so it is day three. Yesterday, we could not get this thing to get spark. Uh, Craig spent last night, took it all apart, and found out that this was the culprit. Lesson learned. Uh, you can't, just because you put a new part in there does not mean that it's, um, it's that fixed. Yeah. This is the little condenser. Uh, Craig is, uh, ohmed it out, tested the resistance with his multimeter, and um, Here, just, what you, with condensers, what you want to do is we're gonna put our negative lead here, and I have this set on ohms. So now watch the meter. It's gonna it's gonna start low, and it well it should start low and go high. See how it's going backwards, kinda. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is a not good condenser. Oh, you didn't. I did. You done it to me. So we're getting we're getting spark now. Yep. There we go. So while Craig's working on all that stuff, this is the kill switch, and you see it was kind of it was kind of cut off, and then it was rewired, and that's that's not acceptable. So. This wire goes in there. I think if I put some heat on there, that's going to melt the solder and I can pull this thing out and I can stick a new one back in. So the kill switch on the bike was broke and then twisted together with some electrical tape. I thought it was being held in by solder, so I tried putting some heat on it to get it to come out, but then I realized it was a little itty bitty tiny screw. I replaced it, got the new wire on, and it's good to go. So how do we replace that? How do we, re how do we get that out of there? Um. It is, isn't it? Remember. That's, we just pull that back. It's a very specialized tool right Very here. specialized tool. All right, so I had Matt talk to Ed. I was like, I want to hear some more stories about this Roken. I want to hear what it was really, what the purpose of it was. And something that Ed said to Matt was that, it did everything it needed to do until they didn't need it anymore. So when Ed got his claim, he needed a way to get to and from the claim. It was about, it was about a half a mile away from, from the main road, but it was a half a mile like vertical straight up. So one way you're going up, one way you're going down. And he got the Rokon before he got the Jimny, 
which before he got the Jiminy stock and trap there, which is the gold nugget, he got the Rokon before that, and this is the only way he can get in and out of the clan. Now he, he tells a story where he was he was he was leaving, he was coming, he was he was trying to get out of the clan, and uh, he, he wrecked it, it rolled pretty good. That's probably maybe why some of the damage on the on the bike is there. Not very much damage, but he wrecked the bike pretty good, and he crawled back to the cabin, stayed there for a couple days. And then went <laughs> until he could heal, or, or he was he felt good enough to actually to come back home, and then got back on the road, kind of fired up, and then made his way straight up the mountain to get this thing back. So he he's, he's been through a lot with this Rokon. He's that's why he's so excited about it. And you know what? But it was so interesting how he put he, how he how he how he put the words up. It did everything it ever needed to do until he just didn't need it anymore. So the, the bike was more of a. You know, we look at motorcycles as, as toys and just things for adventure, but this was more of a tool and it was it had one purpose and it always did that purpose anytime it ever needed it, which makes it a great uh, great bike, a great tool. There's no, there's no wonder why he liked it so much. It's like you're gonna punch yourself in the face. Right. It's gonna be so loud. <laughs> Oh, we're, we're close. They close the lawnmower pools. Yeah! Kill switch works. All right, we got it running. That is amazing. Next week, we're gonna be riding this thing. Now we can change clothes. Now we can change <laughs> clothes and we can shave our face. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe.